so hello everybody uh, welcome to another video over here i'll be discussing all the exogenous catecholamines okay so we'll start off by dis discussing about drug dobutamine now dobutamine is an agonist at both beta 1 and beta 2 receptors okay but the thing to be kept in mind is that beta 1 agonism is much more than beta 2 agonism another point to be kept in mind is that dob dobutamine increases cardiac output more than it increases the heart rate and also due to beta 2 agonism it can cause vasodilatation hence it is used for the treatment of cardiogenic shock and is the ionotrope of choice in acute congestive heart failure CHF now I'll uh, discuss about of the uh, discuss about the pharmacotherapy of uh, CHF a bit in CHF we first treat the pulmonary edema to reduce the uh, this is to reduce the air hunger and to uh, ensure that the there is a shifting of volume that, that the volume of pulmonary blood decreases and systemic blood increases okay uh, pulmonary edema is uh, treated by giving IV furosemide. oil if this doesn't work or uh, then we give IV nitroglycerin if this still doesn't work then we have to give I IV BNP analogs and the name of one BNP analog which you should remember is Neseritide okay so we first give IV furosemide and most patients will respond at this stage if they don't then we give further nitroglycerin and if they still don't respond then we have to give Neseritide. I hope you all remember the functions of BNP that is brain derived natriuretic factor or brain derived natriuretic peptide and hence you can understand why or what is the use in CHF and secondly we will be treating we'll be giving an ionotrope and the ionotrope of choice is dobutamine However, if there is oliguria, then I hope you remember I said that CHF with oliguria, we give dopamine. And if there is no response from dobutamine or dopamine, then we give phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitors. And the preferred drug is milrinone okay and if there is still no response then we give levosimendan bit about levosimendan it is is also a phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitor but additionally it opens potassium channels 
and sensitizes myocardium to calcium okay so levosimine is a new drug and it uh, it has a number of mechanisms of action now let's go back to dobutamine dobutamine is also used as a stressor in pet city and eco cardiography mostly uh, after uh, myocardial infarction to test myocardial perfusion another point about uh, dobutamine which you should remember sorry is that it's d isomer is an alpha 1 blocker however l isomer is an alpha 1 agonist and hence since a racemic mixture is given these two effects cancel out each other and hence no effect on alpha 1 and since it has a very short half life since it has a very short half life is given by continuous IV infusion half life is approximately 2 minutes the next uh, exogenous catecholamine that we have to discuss is isoproteinolol now isoproteinolol is an agonist at both beta 1 and beta 2 and beta 1 agonism is equal to beta 2 agonism okay and if we are to talk about its uses sorry yeah due to beta 1 effect it can be used in AV block it can be used in case of Brady arrhythmias and it can also be used in case of torsades uh, I hope you know what torsad is it is polymorphic ventricular tachycardia uh, I'll be discussing it in my serious portion once again but for the time being you should remember that the in torsades there is pro prolonged QT interval and there is a polymorphic ventricular tachycardia and due to beta 2 agonism it may be used in bronchial asthma the next drug we need to discuss is droxidopa 
now it's a new my relatively new drug approved by fda in 2014 and it is used for the treatment of neurogenic neurogenic hypotension it is actually a pro drug of norepinephrine i hope from your general pharmacology portion you know what's a pro drug it's a drug which is actually activated in our body these drugs such drugs are called pro drugs droxydropa is an example of a pro drug and finally not finally we have to discuss three more drugs sorry um number 4 we have there is dopexamine now dopexamine is an uh, agonist at beta 2 and d1 receptors that is dopaminergic receptor 1 and beta 2 now i can you guess what can be their use see d1 agonism i told you d1 receptors are agonism d1 receptors are present in the uh, jg cells and hence d1 agonism can cause diuresis and this can cause decreased bp and beta 2 agonism we all know decreases bp due to vasodilatation and hence because of a combination of these two effects dopexamine can be given in hypertensive emergency and i hope again you remember what i told about hypertensive emergency blood pressure more than 220 by 125 mm of mercury with end organ damage and yeah this is the final drug we have to discuss for this section phenol dopam phenol dopam is again a d1 agonist and hence it will cause diuresis this will decrease blood pressure and it's an alpha 2 agonist that was beta 2 this is alpha 2 and hence this will also decrease blood pressure because of the auto receptors the alpha 2 auto receptors which will decrease epinephrine and norepinephrine release this decrease blood pressure and hence phenol dopam can also give be given in hypertensive emergency so just to revise dobutamine it's a beta 1 uh, agonist a beta 2 agonist beta 1 agonism is more than beta 2 and it has no net effect on alpha 1 receptors it increases cardiac output much more than heart rate used in cardiogenic shock cardiotrop of choice in acute congestive heart failure in acute congestive heart failure we first treat the pulmonary edema by giving intravenous furosemide if resistant we give intravenous nitroglycerin if still resistant we give intravenous bnp analogs and for as an ionotrope we give dobutamine if there's oliguria present we give dopamine and if it's not working then we have to give phosphodiesterase inhibitors and the preferred drug is milrinone if st- still resistant we have to give levosimendan 
Dobutamine is also used as a stressor in PET CT and echocardiography to test myocardial perfusion. Short, it has a short half life and hence we have to give it by continuous intravenous infusion. Isoprotonol, non selective beta agonist. Due to beta 1 agonism, it can be used in AV block, bradyarrhythmias, and torsades. Beta 2 agonism, we can give in bronchial asthma. Roxidopa, pro drug of norepinephrine, used in uh, the treatment of neurogenic hypotension. Dopexamine is an agonist at beta 2 and D1 receptors. D1 receptors will agonism will cause diuresis, this will decrease blood pressure. Beta 2 agonism will cause vasodilatation, which will also decrease blood pressure, and hence it can be given in hypertensive emergency. Phenol dopam has a similar me mechanism of action, except that in place of beta 2, is alpha 2 agonism, and hence it can also be used in hypertensive emergency. So yeah, this is a short video and thank you for watching it.